Whether it's his percussive piano style, catchy melody, or refreshing tone, Kurt Scobie captivates his audiences when he sits at the piano. We are in the city of Duluth, Georgia to speak with Kurt Scobie. I'm Jermaine Sane, and this is When We Speak. I saw yeah. Scooby, I kept wanting to say Scooby. Yeah. Do you ever get that in? I, I've heard it all. <laughs> Scooby, Scoby, Scobe, uh, Scoby Bryant, Scobedient, <laughs> uh, Scobo Cop, yeah, yeah, just everything. So. Just everything, huh? Yeah. You know, um, actually, I think, well, not exactly, but you're one of the first artists that's been on When We Speak that I know for a fact plays the piano. And I've always admired the piano. I always feel like the piano is, um, it accents the, the, the singer, you know. Um, and sometimes, you know, it takes away from so much music and you really get to hear the vocals of the, the, the performer. I'm curious, uh, curious actually, of how or who introduced you to the piano. Uh, There's a piano teacher named Bucky. Mm -hmm. uh, his, name was, his name was Matthew, but we called him Bucky. I'm not sure where he got that mm -hmm. name, but... He was, and the biggest thing about him was um, he was good, one, but two, he was fun. Mm -hmm. And he made the piano fun for me, and um, he was actually my second piano teacher, um, and he just did an amazing job of kind of bringing me into the instrument and, and introducing me to a, a fun instrument. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been playing the piano? I've been playing for 20 one so year, something like that. Yeah. Age right there. I was trying to think. Yeah. <laughs> I think I started when I was uh, when I was eight, and I'm 29 now. So, um, so 21 years. Okay. Yeah, I tried um, taking piano lessons at one point, mm -hmm. but I just couldn't do it. And right now, I love the piano, and I hate so much that I didn't take the piano. You know, continue to take piano lessons, but it was kind of difficult because yeah. you know I have I think I have long fingers, and they're good for piano. But it's that coordination of doing this on this hand and this on that hand. I just can't do that. Before I came here, I was listening to some of your music, and um, I was like, okay, I really like the storylines of his music and stuff like that. I noticed that you do a lot of stories, and I think that singers are basically storytellers, modern modern day storytellers. And um, but how do you like when you're playing the piano? How do you tell the story of the piano through the piano? Like, how do I evoke emotion? You know, I know how to do it with singing, but how do you do it with just the piano when there's no words being? I mean, didn't say it, right? Uh, going back to uh, my piano teacher, Bucky, he taught mm -hmm. me, uh, uh, one, he taught several lessons, and uh, one was exaggeration, and he talked about, um, you know, let your soft be really soft, and your loud be really loud, and, um, you know, there's certain emotions that you can definitely feel with upbeat songs, or um, upbeat or happy songs are, are kind of light, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they're there. Um, and then there's uh, songs with, if there's any kind of anger or aggression, um, that <laughs> might be where a lot of my songs come from, I don't know, <laughs> but um, there, just it, exaggeration, I, I would say, is a big part of the way I, the way I play, and um, because I, uh, I really want to bring a listener in to what I'm doing, and that requires um, you to kind of over-communicate, if you will. Where are you going? Where have you been? I've been thinking about you ever since we began. Where are you going? Where have you been? I've been thinking about this ever since you called it.
if you had the option of a person just downloading your music or coming to hear you live, which one would you prefer? Live. Definitely. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, downloading music is great because you can just you can take it anywhere and you can uh, put it on repeat. Um, but is there you don't have the same the same memories are not made um, as when you come to a live show and see an artist in person and um, kind of hear like you said like I'm a storyteller and I I'll tell you my story behind my songs and and hopefully that will connect to people and um, and they can just kind of understand better about me about the song about themselves. You saw it blasting and bursting through your windows. You were trying just to breathe, but your world was drowning. It was drowning when it did crash. When were you broken? How did you feel when all you knew was smash and stone? Speaking of storytelling. Your song, Crash. Yeah. Your Crash, actually, is the name of the song. Mm -hmm. In the video, and I won't tell the video, but I was watching the video and I'm like, oh my God, it like shocked me. <laughs> so I won't tell what it is because everyone needs to go and check it out. But <laughs> I know what my interpretation of that song is, but I'm curious to know what your interpretation of that song is. Sure. Um, there are two things. One, that song was written back in, uh, I believe it was um, 2000. Uh, 2005, when Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast, I might be wrong in that year, I'm not quite sure, but um, the song was, was written right after that, and okay. after, I was working at a hotel in Nashville, Tennessee, where I lived at the time, and um, uh, it was, it just came out of seeing people, um, we had the Red Cross put a bunch of people up in our hotel, and so okay. I just got to see firsthand um, these people that left uh, New Orleans because they they lost everything mm -hmm. and uh, and so the song just kind of came out of that I had some roommates that went down to help clean up and they just came back and said we, we did nothing and we worked we worked for three days straight and we didn't do anything because there was so much damage there's so wow. much um, so much destruction um, from that storm, so uh, so one that that's where that song kind of comes from. But the, the second thing is that um, on a broader level, I feel like everybody goes through periods uh, of their life when they crash, when they hit a wall, they they get knocked down, and feel like they've gotten hit by a truck, and they they just want to lay in bed and uh, and die, or they just want to just they want to close their eyes and and just pray that it that it just was a dream yeah. um, and going back to wanting to empathize with people and, and sympathize people the song your crash uh, says um, uh, lyrics for like the chorus is um, did you see your crash coming was it out of the blue blindsided did it hurt um, was anyone there you know just these questions of are you okay, okay. and um, and can you move? At the end of the song, they say, can you move? And that's a, a question of um, not only are you okay, but kind of an encouragement. Um, can you get up? Can you, can you, can you do this? Um, more of a, I think you can. The taste is so strong. I feel how it burns. You are the king of bittersweet. So leading to my last question, All right. <laughs> are you ready for this yes. major last question, uh -huh. this thought-provoking question, okay. which is not that hard. I'm just curious of wanting to know that 
Well, I would want to know, if you were tasked to tell a story, which you do already, but if you were tasked to tell a story and you could only use one talent, either sing it or play it on the piano, which one would you choose? Hmm. That's a tough question. Um, I love the... Um, I love the instrument. I love. I mean, I love all instruments. I love the piano. And I love. Um, I love singing, and I. I've thought about this actually in in, as a as a performer as a musician. Um, what is my number one instrument? And I would have to say that uh, it is my voice, and I feel like um, the piano, um, is, is really expressive. But I feel like the vo your voice is even more expressive in, in a lot of ways right. like it just is um, you can crescendo mm -hmm. on on one note on one note you don't have um, you don't have air with with a piano mm -hmm. moving sound right um, and you know it's, it's a different instrument it's hard to compare but as, as for me I would say that my number one instrument is is my voice um, because I feel like one, I've been pl I've been singing longer than I'm playing. I think my mom said I, um, of course, moms say all kinds of things. But, uh, <laughs> she said that I was humming before I was, when I was two, and so you know, uh, for what that's worth, I I just um, I feel I feel more accomplished on my voice than than on piano, for sure. So. Well, that's all of our time. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so, 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 so much yeah, thank for you. accepting this interview. And I look forward to seeing more of you. And I can't wait for tonight for your interview. For your, not for your interview. I'm interviewing yeah. you right now for your show. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, thank um, you for uh, the interview and thanks for coming. And it's, it's going to be a great, great night, great show. Okay. So. And so, Pleasure. once again, your website is? It's KurtScobie.com. So, K-U-R-T-S-C-O-B-I-E.com. So once again, I want to thank you so much for watching When We Speak TV. I'm Jermaine Sane, and this is Kurt Scobie. And always remember that death and life are in the power of the tongue. This